All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a uh, pixel mega tree from the beginning to end. So, uh, here I've got a, a blank um, profile set up. I'm using 3.6U3. Uh, some of the features I'm going to show you in here as far as setting this up require the 3.6 series of, of Vixen. So, if you're using something older than that, uh, this is probably you need to upgrade to, to follow along in this video. So I'm going to show you my display setup here. I don't have anything here. This is a completely uh, blank setup. So um, I'm going to go in, instead of in the past where you would start in setup display, I'm going to start this in, in setup previews. I've got a basic preview that, I, that I've added here. So I just did uh, add new preview to the blank area here. Uh, gave it a name and updated that. And then I have this house front preview here. So I've got that highlighted. I'm going to configure the preview here. And it comes up with an empty preview. Uh, I've got a, um, a base image that I put in here, a picture of a house. Um, you know, you add whatever you need from up here into the uh, image for the background image. Um, so to get started with uh, building the mega tree, um, I'm going to take advantage of some new features in 3.6 where I can configure the vast majority of this from the preview and instead of the display setup and preview back and forth like we used to do before. So I'm going to click on the, the mega tree up here, the smart object, and I'm going to draw out uh, a tree here. And this is the rough shape of the size that I want it to be. I can go back and edit this layer, but this throws out a simple 360 degree tree as a baseline to show me where it's going to be to start with. When I let go of the, the mouse there, it's going to invoke the wizard to um, create this for me. So it'll have some sensible defaults in here. Uh, the tree name is a mega tree. 16 strings is fairly common for, for a lot of mega trees. I want this to be a pixel tree, so I'm going to check the, the box here. And it defaults at uh, 50 pixels per string. So 16 strings, 50 pixels each string is fairly common for for a mega tree setup these days. And I'm just going to go with the defaults for, for the naming convention here. Each pixel is going to have a, a prefix of PX. Uh, the string pixels are going to have a prefix of S. You can set these up however you want. This will be uh, how the elements get named when it gets created. This is the same wizard that you could have invoked from the drop down up here or the same drop down in the display setup. So I click OK there. And then the first thing it's going to ask me is if I want a dimming curve for this prop. If I run my pixels at 100% brightness, I don't need to have any need to dim those or use a gamma curve or anything like that, I would just say no here. Um, in this case, I'm going to say yes for a simple setup. Um, I'm going to click set up a dimming curve. And in here, I can um, take this curve and edit it however I want. Uh, to, you know, so if I wanted it to be 70% overall brightness, I could um, could just drag it to here, and this ramp would make me a 70% linear dimming curve. Um, if I have um, a curve already saved, so I've got a um, tree dimming curve here that I made prior to this and saved, uh, I'm going to use this instead. So this links this to a library curve. Now if I go edit this library curve at some point in the future, then my mega tree will automatically uh, update that dimming curve. I don't have to go back in and repatch it or change this. So this is a simplification step that um, many people might miss and they end up having to repatch. So I've got a library curve there. If I didn't have one already, I could create that up. And then um, I could hit save curve here, save it to my library, and then uh, load the curve just like I did a moment ago there. To, to load that curve in. Either way, I, I want to get a curve here that matches what I want for, for my mega tree. I say OK there. It's already got the default option here that, that's the most appropriate. These other options uh, get used in the display setup, but they're not, they're not needed here because this is the proper option. So pre-selected for me. I just hit OK. It creates the 800 dimming curves. Um, just like it would in the display setup if I invoke the dimming curve wizard there. So I hit OK. The next thing I'm going to do is the color handling. Uh, I would have typically done this in the display setup before as well. Uh, it knows it's a pixel tree I'm creating, so it has the sensible default of their RGB and full mixing. 
Uh, if I have something different, I can select the color order here that's uh, that's appropriate. I'm just going to use the standard RGB for this one. So I hit OK, and uh, now my um, color properties have been added. It's the same message you would see in Display Setup if you did it there. And now my tree adapts uh, to a, a full 16 uh, string, 360 degree tree. Um, you can see up here that uh, the mega tree has been created. These, this is the full element structure. I've got my 16 strings here. Um, each string has a uh, the 50 pixels in it that you would expect. And if I um, click on the whole mega tree, it turns purple. This shows that the elements are linked to the preview element correctly. And click on each one of the strings, and you can follow that around and see that each individual string is, is properly linked correctly. So that sets that up um, just like I want. So I'm going to go into selection mode. Now I'm going to click on the tree itself, and this allows me to edit the properties of the tree. So in this case, it's a 360 degree tree. Uh, my number one pixels down here to the right, but if I needed to rotate that 360 degree 90 degrees to move that um, that pixel around, I can rotate that around and set which spot is my starting spot there. In this case, I'm actually going to use a 180 degree tree, so I'm going to switch it to 180 here, and I want my degree offset to be zero at that point. So then, pixel one is now here at the bottom left and I have that configured up. So uh, there's a few other properties here. The base height, I can use this to um, set the curvature down here. So if I set this to 75, you see it has um, a, more of a curved base to it here. You can set that to, to whatever suits your needs uh, there. Um, the top height and the top width adjust on, on how, these, uh, how these look up here. So I can make it with a fatter top if I want. Uh, or you know, back to the fairly narrow top. Uh, the top height here adjusts how much of a curvature is is in this part of it as well. So the default there for that one is probably correct in most cases. So, but you can use that to to tweak however you want. Um, at this point, I can move the tree around. I can uh, adjust it and size it. You know, however I want to to make it um, appropriate for for what I need for my display. So there's the, the complete setup for a mega tree in my display. I've got all the element created. I'm done with this part in the preview. If I had other things, I could create other elements, but we're focusing on the mega tree here at the moment. So I'm going to close that up. Um, I'm going to turn the preview on here so then uh, it's visible and ready to go and I want to use it. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go into the display setup here and show you that the mega tree is created here. Uh, just like you would expect, uh, this matches what's in the preview. And mostly what I did there was the same as I would have done here with the combination of the, the wizard here, these wizards down here, and directly linking it in the preview. So you see that that's, um, if you're familiar with the older process, that's much faster and easier to do than we had before. So now I have my uh, 800 elements for my 800 pixels with all the... Um, dimming curve and the um, breakdowns were now 2400 outputs which is correct uh, for my controller so I'm going to add in uh, a simple E131 controller here and I'm going to call this mega tree say OK um, this is the only thing I'm going to do with this so it needs uh, 2400 outputs so that matches what I have over here I'm just going to do the basic uh, universe setup here, universe 1, 510 for universe. I'm going to add in my um, universes that I need. I'm going to set this last one to be 360 so it matches my um, 2400 pixels here. And uh, we're just going to let it multicast for the time being. You can set this to be whatever you need to do. So then I say OK. We've got 2400 outputs here. You can see these all configured up with my universes. So the next thing I'm going to do is select this. I've got my mega tree selected. Uh, it shows that I'm going to patch 2400 elements to 2400 controllers, exactly what I want. I'm going to hit patch. And now I have my, my uh, everything's green here. Everything's patched up correctly. 
I can go in here and look at the very first pixel here. Um, I can select this uh, little grid thing. It shows me it's patched to the first three outputs on the controller, which is exactly what I want. The graphical view shows this pixel goes through the dimming curve to the color breakdown and to the one, two, and three output on the controller. And you can you know check for any one of these, but this is a, a complete setup. Which, uh, as long as you've got your controller configured correctly to, to, to match up to the settings there, then this is all set and ready to go. So I can say OK. And I'm just going to create a simple new sequence here. And um, I've got my mega tree here as I would expect. And then we're just going to drop a, a simple set level on here. Um, I'm going to make it red. I can edit it over here. You see other videos for how to edit effects. I'm going to turn on the preview, and you'll see there my uh, mega tree is is all set up and and ready to go there. So if I change the color to blue, it changes blue. Everything's all fully set up, functioning. I'm ready to sequence now. So hopefully that helps you with setting up other elements or a mega tree specifically in Fixin 3.6 U3. Thank you.